afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching me from in the world. If you can hear me, if you can see me, put your city in the comments. Hey Mandy, if you can hear me, if you can see me, put your city in the comments. Let me shout some people out. If y'all don't mind, just hey Annabelle, just tap the screen for me. It helps alert other people that we are live. Hey, is it Simba? Hey Overflow, how are you? I'm not gonna, Pennsylvania is in the building. I'm not gonna be before y'all long because my phone about to die. So we gonna see how far we can get. Mississippi is in the building. Shout out to you. Hey, Miss Lady. Raleigh is in the building. I'm headed to Raleigh very, very soon. South Africa is in the building. Sumter, South Carolina. You know, my dad has family in Sumter, South Carolina. So shout out to you. You know, I'm not the best at YouTube. I'm not the best at YouTube. Like, that's, I'm just, I just be posting, be honest. All right, y'all, I want to talk real quick. I was looking at um, 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, and Paul said, For a great door and effectual and effectual has opened up to me, and there are many adversaries. So basically what that's saying is there's a big opportunity, right, that has opened up for me. But as this door, this opportunity has opened up for me, there's also adversaries. There's also something opposing me from going through this door or for having this opportunity. If anybody has no... Sorry, that's my sign for my phone. If anybody has noticed in the last maybe month or two, intense warfare, it's because you're at the door. You are literally at this place, at the opportunity that you've been praying for, that you've been believing for. But the enemy does not want you to go through this door. So he's trying to wage war. He's trying to get that last shebang, that last shebang before you go through the door. So you're going to learn, you're going to have to battle well. Even as it intensifies, as it get a little bit hotter, you think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar said, Throw them in the in the furnace, but don't just throw them in the furnace. I want to turn it up seven times hotter. I want it to be seven times hotter. That's how the enemy is trying to do us. The Bible says he comes to wear the saints out, seeking to change laws and times. Basically, what that says is he comes to distract you. He comes to push and kick and all of that. So you your breakthrough will change. So you won't have a breakthrough. So you'll miss it again this time. So I need you to be strong. I need you to fight. I need you to use your spiritual weapons. And I need you to wage war. As he's throwing, you throw back. But you throw back in the spirit. Increase your prayer time. Increase your praise. Increase your worship. Whatever it is, fight back, y'all. You are literally at the door. All of this wealth transfer, all these things they've been saying for a very long time. It's finally here. It's finally here, but the enemy wants to see what he can do. You think about Daniel. He was praying three times a day for 21 days straight. And when that angel came, that angel said, we heard you from the first time you sent up those prayers. But there was a principality that came and we had to fight. And then he says, and when I go back, there's another one coming. So he was consistent in praying three times a day for 21 days. And he still came up came up against some demonic opposition right so you gotta just y'all this is holy week we gotta push we gotta push y'all we are not gonna go around this wall one more time we're not gonna walk around this thing one more time this is it right here the very thing you've been praying for the very thing you've been believing for you're gonna have to wage war in the spirit you're gonna have to push and you gotta remember an eagle never fights a snake on the ground level. An eagle will come down and take that snake up because the eagle knows that in the air, the snake has no power. In your worship, in your praise, the snake has no power. In your prayers, the snake has no power. Do not come down for this low level stuff. It's time out for low level. Don't come down for low level stuff. Ascend, y'all. We talked about this the other day. We got to ascend and we ascend in our praise. We ascend in our prayer. We go to the next level, y'all. We go to the next dimension. We know that this is a spiritual fight. Hey, Alexis. We know that this is a spiritual fight, y'all. And I know it's getting intense. I feel it myself. But when you start to feel that thing, that's when you got to push back harder. 
Go a little bit longer in praise. Go a little bit longer in prayer. Whatever you need to do, worship. Whatever you need to do, shift the battle. Shift the battle, y'all. Shift the battle. You think about Jesus when the enemy was sent to tempt him, right? The, the, the Bible says the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. So he was led by the spirit there. And when he came to tempt him, he kept hitting him back with the word. It is written. You got to hit him back with the word. When he's coming up against your marriage, coming up against your finances, you tell him what the word says. What does the word says? That's why we got to come in covenant. That's why we got to become one with the word. So that way, when the enemy is throwing these little daggers and throwing this little stuff to get us off. Nope. The word says this. I, the enemy is reminding you, you only got two dollars in your account. You said that's not what he says in his word. He said, wealth and riches shall be in my house. He said that if I give, it be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, that men will give unto my bosoms. I'm expecting men to continue to give unto my bosoms. Whatever it is, if it's your marriage, that's why you always got to have some type of scripture that you can hold on to. I like to read the Bible based off of what I'm facing. Hey, Belinda, based off of what I'm going through, right? And that's just my personal preference. So that way, when the enemy is trying to throw things about maybe my marriage, my finances, my business, whatever it is, I got an arsenal of scriptures that I'm going to throw right back at them. And I'm going to stand on the word. Everybody talks about standing on business. We got to stand on the Bible in these last days. We got to stand on the Bible in these last days, y'all. Take the word and work the word. The word will work if you work it. The word will work if you work it. This time out for being a punk. It's time out for, for surrendering and bowing down. We are not bowing down. You literally at the door. And some of you, the door is voice activated, but you haven't said anything. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. You haven't said anything to this door. You haven't said anything to this door. Hey, Dreamy, you haven't said anything to this door. The word will work if you work it, y'all. We got it. Even if it looking crazy, even it looks like your back up against the wall, even it looks like the enemy is just swallowing up, right? Maybe that wasn't a good example since that. Anyway, <laughs> you got to just wage war, wage war. And we do it in the spirit. Don't come down in the natural. Do it in the spirit. Take that snake up. Take that snake up. Take that snake up. Take that snake up. Ascend in your prayer life, right? You might have to give a little bit more. You might have to be fasting all this week. Exactly, Erin. <laughs> all this week. All this week. You might have to be turning down your plate a little bit more right? I just need y'all to work the word and I need y'all to stay in the fight. I need y'all to work the word and stay in the fight. You are literally right here. You are literally right here, y'all. Do not forfeit this promise. Do not let anybody come down. Do not let anybody come down. Don't let anybody, excuse me, don't let anybody make you come down. Ascend. Ascend. You have to change your perspective. If you say something is hard, it's going to be hard. You have to change your perspective. If you think something is going to be hard, it's going to be hard. You may have to start where you are. Maybe you can't do from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Maybe you got to try to do from 6 to 1 or from 7 to 1. I don't know your schedule. But if you say something is hard, it's going to be hard. So you have to change your perspective. You have to change your perspective. Our bodies will be okay without food. I mean, you want to consult with your doctor. Let me just put that disclaimer out here, even though the great physician... Um, but our bodies will be okay. It's just our bodies are so used to always eating, 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 eating. Y'all, we're here. We are here. We are here. We are literally here, y'all. We are literally here. We cannot forfeit this one. Not this time. And then another thing is, if God tells you to do a thing, you got to do it. No more procrastination. No more, oh, I'm going to just sit back and wait. No. If he said, do it, do it. I, was, I made a video earlier and I was talking about Mary, how Mary said to the servant, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Even when it doesn't make sense. Even when it sounds crazy. Even when it doesn't add up to what's going on in your life. Do it anyway. I told y'all that the, all the time. I was broke, busted, disgusted, sleeping on my parents' the couch. Had three degrees. Nobody was hiring me. And then one day the Lord going to tell me to start a Facebook page. And I'm like, Lord, for what? I need money. My car about to be repossessed. These credit cards come calling me. They don't care about no Facebook page. But when you really love God, you can't tell them no. So I said, okay, God, whatever. What do I got to lose? Started that Facebook page. That night, 10,000 followers. Day nine, 100,000 followers. Somebody reached out to me a few weeks after that and says, hey, the Lord told me to give you a logo. Somebody reached out after that and says, hey, I want to hire you. 
I want you to do my marketing. So I built a consulting agency around a Facebook page. It may sound crazy, but if God told you to do it, do it. If God told you to do it, do it. If God says to do it, do it. Sometimes our excuse is I'm waiting on God. When he already gave you instructions. He gave you instructions last year. He gave you instructions last season and you're just sitting on it. And you're just sitting on it. What if, what if the Lord gave you a window of opportunity and says, hey, you got 60 days to do it. And if you don't do it, I'll give it to somebody else. And you take that as a joke. I told y'all the story the other day too about Dr. Tracy Lynn. The Lord told her to write a book. She got a prophetic word. She fell out in the church. Y'all running around in the church. She got this prophetic word. She never wrote the book. She went in the bookstore. And she saw some a book with the same title. The same colors of the book that the Lord told her to do. Same similar chapters in the book. How would that make you feel if you go in the bookstore and you see something that was supposed to say your name on it? It's time out, y'all. It's time out for being these scared punk Christians. No, it's time to man up, woman up. If the Lord tells you to do it, there's a grace to do it. There's an anointing to do it. If God told you to do it, do it. No more I'm waiting on God, especially if he gave you instructions. If he gave you instructions, you're waiting. It's just, it's just you delaying yourself. There's demonic delays, right? There's God delays, and then there's delays on us, right? Some, some of us are going through unnecessary warfare because of us. Jonah was literally on that ship about to get all those other people killed and dead because he was somewhere he wasn't supposed to be. He was literally on that ship and he wasn't supposed to be there. He put their lives in danger. Your yes is bigger than you. It's connected, to, it's connected to more people than you. It's bigger than you. Your yes is never about you. It's for the other people connected to you. If I didn't tell God yes almost seven years ago, I wouldn't even be on this live. I wouldn't even be on this platform. Y'all wouldn't even be watching me today. I had to move out of my own way, put my pride aside, put my thinking of how my life should be to accept the will of God. In the will of God, there's always protection. When you get out of the will of God, there goes your protection. When you say, you know what, God, I don't need you in this area. I'll keep you, God, for spiritual things, but the other stuff, I got it. Watch the areas of lack that will be in your life. When I told God, I'm good, in every, I'm good God, don't, don't mess with my money, don't mess with my career, don't mess with my purpose, those were the areas I was struggling in. Until I made him Lord over every area. Over every area. Because we like to be in control, right? We like to, to have our lives planned out. We like to have all of these goals. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you always got to leave room for what God is telling you to do. You got to leave room for, hey, Kiana, what God is telling you to do. Y'all, we at the door. The at the, the, uh, the, uh, the warfare you're experiencing this week alone is proof that you're at the door it's proof it's intensified it's seven times hotter than it's normally been you you feel like you're fighting for your life but i want you to go up in your worship go up in your praise some of y'all you need to just go dance and thank them in advance because you're at the door some of you you need to speak to the door you need to t prophesy to the door prophesy to them dry bones some of you need to go get your wallet right now and prophesy to your wallet you're literally at the door, y'all. We're so close. We're here. We're here. We're here. Belinda, you always show out for me. I'm going to make you a mod. You always show out for me. Thank you. You don't have to do that. Appreciate you. All right. Y'all, we at the door. At the door. I need y'all to push, y'all. Push. This baby is almost out. Push. I can see the head. I can see the head. I can literally see the head, y'all. Push. Push. Push in your praise. Push in your worship. Push in your prayer. If it means turning down your plate, do what you got to do, y'all. Push. 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 Do not. Do not miss this opportunity. Because it may never come back around like that today anymore. It may be a window. There's some things that God does. There's a window of opportunity. Certain things, God is not going to wait for us forever. And the people get offended and mad when I say that all the time. There's certain things in God he needs you to move. Trust me, if I didn't move in 2017, he would have gave it to somebody else. I know it. Because I met somebody 
some years ago and she said you know the lord told me to do something very similar to what you're doing on facebook she said and i gave it to my leaders and they um they didn't see it you know they couldn't get it they didn't grasp it so i put it to the side i didn't do it and now i see you walking in the very thing that the lord told me to do one woman's no was another woman's yes one woman's no was another woman's yes. If there's somebody that loves God and that's eager and like, God, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. God will skip you if you're going to tell him no or not right now or it don't look like something I should do or you in disobedience. He'll skip over you and go to somebody who's next and ready. You're literally at the door. That's right, Sharonda. At the door. Do not forfeit it, y'all. If you ever, if you ever notice sometimes in life, it feels like you're repeating a year that you that you went through maybe five, six years ago. You feel like every time a certain time of year, you know, it, th things dry up in certain areas or your marriage get this, that's a sign. You feel stagnation. I've already, and this is only March, I feel like I'm repeating 2020 already, already. I look at some of my old videos from 2020 and I'm saying the same things I was saying in 2020. Even some of the business moves that I'm making now. I was doing it in 2020, but in 2020, I was making so much money, I just like pushed some of that stuff to the side, and now I'm doing it again. We don't want to keep repeating stuff. No, I got to get it right in 2024. I got to get it right in 2024, because I'm not going around this mountain another time. I'm not going, I'm not doing this again. Don't miss your right. Don't miss your timing in God. Don't miss it, y'all. Don't miss it. How would you feel if you literally... Go into a bookstore, go see a podcast, and it's the same thing the Lord told you to do. And they got the same name, same color scheme. You have it planned out in your journal, in your notebook. You got all these great ideas in your journal, in your notebook, and you know the Lord been giving it to you. And you're just sitting on it. You're just sitting on it. What's sitting on it going to do? The timing is never, in our eyes, in our sight, the timing is never going to be right. It's never going to be the best time to do this and do that. No, and God, God operates outside of time. This time he gave us for us, to help us. But he don't need it. You think about the, the widow woman, just like this. She went from widow to entrepreneur, supernaturally. She went from widow to entrepreneur, just like this. First thing she did was she sought wisdom from the man of God. Now, we don't need a man or woman of God to give us wisdom. We could go directly to the Lord, Right? She got wisdom and then she followed the instructions of what the man told her to do, even if it may not have sound right to her. She just knew I don't want my sons to be sold to slavery from no creditors. The creditors is getting ready to take my sons. I need I need some wisdom. I need some help. Hello. I need something. The man said, go get some vessels. She, he asked her, what's in your house? At first, she's like nothing but some oil. Some of y'all, you think the thing that you got is small. God can take that and make that, magnify that. Jeremiah saw a boy. God saw a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah saw the raw materials. God saw the finished product. Remember that. God don't see how we see. So she went and she, the man told her to, you know, get some, go borrow some vessels, not a few. That was key too in that scripture. Go get some vessels, not a few, and then fill them up. Pour them and fill them up. And then when she came back, he said, now I want you to go sell them. And the oil only ran out because she ran out of vessels. If she would have had more and more vessels, it would have still kept pouring. God's supernatural, the law of multiplication on what you think is little or what you think is nothing. Some of you, you literally have ideas and plans and Google drives and Dropbox folders full of stuff. You trying to figure out, God, you know, what to do with these finances. And God's like, well, what about the idea I gave you? You looking for me to put a million dollars in your account, but I gave you a million dollar idea that you still haven't put to market yet. Entrepreneurs, you've been sitting on that idea for so long. When are you going to put it out? When are you going to put it out? God is giving you a whole strategy and you will just sitting on it. When are you going to put it out? How is somebody going to know about your product or your service if you ain't put it out there yet? How's somebody going to know about your art? How's somebody going to know about your music if you didn't put it out there? Don't worry about naysayers and what other people got to say. Follow the instructions of the Lord. Follow the instructions of the Lord. What did he tell you to do? 
and just do it. Do it afraid. Do it scared. Just do it. Do it in him. That's more importantly. Cat, give him the, the fear. Give him the rejection, whatever it is. And stop telling everybody what you're going to do. Move in silence. Follow what the Lord is telling you to do and don't go telling everybody. Follow it because some people will come to literally, literally stop you and hinder you. Talk you out of the very thing God told you to do. I tell y'all that story all the time. How I let this woman of God sow negative seeds. She told me the Lord didn't tell you you shouldn't make your, you, the Lord did never tell you to write a book. The Lord didn't tell you to go live. You shouldn't be talking to people. You shouldn't be doing none of that. You shouldn't be on no magazine covers. You shouldn't be on nobody radio station. This is all stuff she's saying to me, right? You shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. All to get me in a place of fear. So now I'm questioning, okay, well, maybe God didn't really tell me to do that. I don't want to do it anyway. You know, I never prayed for this stuff that the Lord's given me. You know, I don't want to do it anyway. So maybe she's right. I took a demonic seed and accepted it and it was planted in me. I used to go live on Facebook and at, at one time I would get six, 7,000 people watching me live. Not overall, at one time. And then I took the hold of what somebody else said and I stopped going live and I lost momentum. All because I came into covenant with what some insecure woman of God said. That's why you can't be telling everybody what you're doing. Now, we love our friends. Thank God for our friends. But some of them ain't got to know either. Some of the things you got to do, move in silence. Move in silence because if it's between you and God, if God gave you the idea, there's an understanding, right? They don't understand what God told you to do. Follow the leading of the Lord. Be like that, that widow woman. She went for she went for wisdom. She got instructions and then she followed the instructions. You think about David, I think in 2 Samuel. He, um, he, the first thing he did was he inquired of the Lord, which means he prayed. God, shall I pursue? Shall I pursue? And he waited for instructions. He waited to see what God was going to tell him to do. We as believers get caught up in the waiting for God to tell us what to do. Because we don't hear something in that first second. We're like, oh, God's not talking to me. God's been silent to me. No. Sometimes God wants to see how bad do you want this thing? How long will you sit in my presence until you hear from me? How long will you cry? How long will you wail in the spirit? How long will you pursue me to get this answer? Y'all, we can't miss it. Not this time. If this is for you, put not this time. If you're not going to miss this door, this opportunity, whatever it is that the Lord is saying for you, put that in the comments. I'm not going to miss it. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time, y'all. Not this time. No. Too far in. Too far in to be moving backwards. Too far. You're too far in to move backwards. We're not repeating this yet again. Some of you too, um, you might need to repent if you did some things crazy in previous season because you might be repeating the cycle because of some type of uh, co uh, covenant that you made with a previous season. You might need to make, you know, ask the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Ghost. Did, did I do something? You know, am, am I repeating this for a reason? What's the lesson you want me to learn? Ask. Just to make sure. Just to make sure. Make sure there's no curses. There's no, you know, there's no um, legalities for hell to have access to your life. No open doors. It's real, y'all. Them open doors is real. Exactly. We can't afford to. We can't afford to. We can't afford to. We can't afford to. Absolutely, Herbal. We can't afford to. We can't afford to miss it. We can't afford to miss it. And ask God for a second wind. Some of you just need strength. May the strength of God, like the wind, blow upon you on today. You just need your fight back. You just need God to rejuvenate you and recharge. When you find yourself getting to the place of anxiety, overwhelmed, frustrated, that's an indication that it's time to unplug from the world and plug into heaven. God, I need you. God, I'm tired. God, I'm frustrated. God, I'm mad that this didn't go how I expected it to go. Be real. That's your father, right? If that's your father, be real and honest. I need you, God, to help me. I got, I, I'm trying to forgive God, but I'm struggling. 
I need you, God. Help me. Whatever it is. We don't want to carry anything that we're not called to carry. He said, cast. Cast means to like throw it. Don't carry it. You're going to be looking old before your time if you're carrying something. No, cast it. Make that divine exchange like the woman with the issue of blood. She went to him looking for healing and she got wholeness in every area of her life. You can't get Jesus in the middle of the situation and he don't come for every area. You believe in God for your marriage and he says, and I'm not just going to bless your marriage. I'm also going to give you the baby you've been praying for for the last five years. I'm also going to give you the finances. I'm also going to give you the building, everything, everything. I'm also going to heal your body. Hey, see, I'm also going to do what, whatever needs to be done. You got to make that divine exchange. God, here's my chaos in exchange for your peace, in exchange for wholeness. God says, I want to clean every part of you. I don't want to just, just tackle that one area. I need all of it. I want, to get you, I want to get you free in every area of your life. I don't want that, that bondage to hold you hostage anymore. I don't want your unforgiveness to stop my hand in your life. Give it to me. And just because you forgive somebody, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, say, that, uh, it doesn't say that what they did was right. Forgiveness takes that yoke off of your neck and lets it go, right? But sometimes you got to forgive by faith. Ah, Rabba. Sometimes you have to forgive by faith. Continually coming to God and say, God, yesterday I forgave him, but now I got on social media and I didn't see he on there talking. God, I, I got to give that thing to you again. I got to give that thing to you again. And I told you all the story all the time. My brother was murdered, stabbed 21 times by his best friend. There's a level of forgiveness. Got to forgive by faith. Forgive by faith. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, Smiley. Yeah, Smiley. It's, it's a journey. It's a journey. Especially when you know that you handled the person correctly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you wasn't really at fault. <sighs> y'all, we're, we're at the door. We're not going to please, y'all. We cannot repeat this again. Hey, Tasha. We cannot, thank you for sharing too. We cannot repeat this again. No, not this time. Y'all, forgive, right? Fences, gotta let that go too. Cause this is what the enemy will do. He will literally say, you see Kwan is still mad at such and such. You say, you see Kwan is still mad at Shy. You see Kwan ain't forgive Shy and keep bringing, accusing us. And when there's, when there's an open door like that, the enemy can literally have access to your life. You're wondering why this thing in your finances ain't working. Let me tell y'all a story. I don't know if it was, was it last year or the year before? Maybe last year. I was doing, I had some clients and I was doing work for them. And then all of a sudden they got cute and stopped, pay, and stopped paying me. And I'm just like, hold up, right? We had an agreement, right? A, a, agreement, written agreement. And they dishonored that. And so, um, after a while, I just cut them off. I'm like, I'm not working for free. These ninjas is crazy. Like, no. And so I cut them off. But then I noticed in my business, my finances wasn't like it used to be. And I'm like, hold up, God, because that's a red flag to me. Money is current. It don't stop. It just, when you see that thing, hold up. God, what, what's up? Right? So I'm like, God, what's up? Did I do anything? He says, you're offended. And because you're offended, that's stopping my hand. Your offense, y'all, could cost you a blessing. Nobody is worth it. Let it go. Even if you need to forget, keep forgiving by faith, let it go. And I said, and I even wrote the lady a note. I said, you know what? And she was confused. She just thought like, I don't know. I said, the Holy Ghost made me send you this uh, message. And I just said, I forgive you. You know, even though I feel like I handled the situation right, I forgive you. God bless you. I wish you blessings upon blessings upon blessings, right? And that's just a summary. I, I don't remember what I said. Right? I said that, right? I let it go. And then I noticed that currency started coming again. You got to let it go, y'all. Don't let it cost you your blessing. Nobody's worth it. Nobody's worth it. Nobody's worth it. I know sometimes we've been through some childhood trauma. Things have been done to us as kids. And I, I get it. I, y'all get it. 
But you got to just forgive it. I'm not saying you got to be kicking into that person's face. Absolutely not. I, I wouldn't get on here and say that. That ain't my heart. But you let you you take the yoke off of your neck. You're no longer a slave to what did or didn't happen. You're saying, Jesus, I make you Lord over my heart. I make you Lord over this area of my life. I trust you so much that I can forgive them. I trust you so much that I'm letting that go because I know you're going to bless me. I know you're going to take care of me, right? I remember one time when I was going through betrayal and I was like, you know, I thought I was healed, right? But I would find myself being in prayer, begging God to vindicate me. I would be, that would be our number one conversation before I know it. God, when are you going to vindicate me? You knew they was lying. When are you going to, it was begging him. Like literally every time I show up in prayers, when are you going to vindicate me? And then one day I was in worship and God said, give it to me. That very need to be vindicated, that very need for vindication, I want you to give it to me. And I started crying and bawling. And I said, God, and I surrendered. If you never vindicate me, I'm still going to be blessed. If you never vindicate me, I'm still going to praise you, God. Because I trust you more than that situation that I went through. I trust you. My life is in your hands. So it don't matter who betrays me or what I go through. My life is in your hands. Don't get, don't, you, you could got to be careful, like, not to make the blessing or the thing that you're praying for an idol. Not to make it an idol. When it becomes an idol, then it becomes a problem. And anything you put before God, watch that thing fail you. Watch that thing disappoint you. Watch that thing break your heart. I had a message during the pandemic um, that I said that God was getting ready to tear down idols in the church. Because people have made their man and woman of God idols. They access God through their man and woman of God when they need to be accessing God for themselves. Now, we thank God for men and women of God. But if that's your only point to Jesus, then something is wrong. Something is off. If you got to jump from live to live, from prayer thing to prayer thing, asking everybody to pray for you, but you don't pray for yourself. Why would you leave your life? what you're going through in the hands of somebody else. You should be praying for yourself as well. We thank God for prayer partners. We thank God for prayer. But you have right, divine right and access to go to your heavenly father to, uh, with, without the middle man. Without the middle man. It's time out for accessing God through everybody else. Your relationship matters. Your relationship is key. And any man or woman of God that points you to themselves and not to Jesus is a warlock or a witch. I'm convinced. False prophet, whatever you want to call them. Anybody who points you to them and not to Jesus, you need to mark them. You need to mark them. And cut ties with them. Stop watching them, whatever. Every real prophet will point you back to the Lord. Will point you back to Jesus. But that's why you got to have that relationship for yourself. You got to know how to pray for yourself. Because what if there comes a time, we see how it was in the pandemic, you, you couldn't go to church, right? And you, may, some of y'all may not have your pastor's home number where you could call them up and be like, yo, pastor, I'm going through this and I'm going through that, right? You had to learn how to get on your knees and pray for your household and yourself. Amen, God's angelic daughter. No going back, y'all. We're literally at the door at the door at the door some of you got to open up your mouth and say something some of these doors are voice activated prophesy to the door prophesy to the door i'm gonna put this on youtube if it lets me download it i've been struggling with downloading for some reason tiktok sometimes it don't let me download but if it does i'm gonna put it on youtube i have to figure out a um alternative to that too because i don't know sometimes it doesn't let me we're at the door y'all we're getting ready to go into well this is holy week going into resurrection april is going to be a great month april is going to be a great month some of you need to start prophesying to april april will be one of the best months of 2024 april will be one of the best months of my life you need to start speaking to it one thing that 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 aggravates me when I see people they prophesy to the 
future, but they're prophesying doom. They'll be like, oh, I can't go to this because I won't have money in August. How do you know what you'll have in August? You're speaking that, right? If you're going to say you're not going to have something in August, guess what? When August comes, watch, you won't have it because you've spoken that. Our words, you have to be mindful. Our words frame our world. Our words in Hebrews 11.1. 1, our words, I think it's 11.1, 1, frame our world. You want a better world? You got to frame it. You frame it with your words, but you, the word that you take is the word of God. You don't take doom and gloom. You say exactly what heaven has already said. You come into covenant with heaven. As it is in heaven, so shall it be in my life. As it is in heaven, so shall it be in your life. As it is written in heaven on today, that's what it is in my life on today. Decree, decree, the Bible says when you decree a thing, it shall be established. When was the last time you made a mighty decree from your mouth? When was the last time you spoke the word of God out of your mouth and believed it and stood on it? Because sometimes we could just quote scriptures because it sounds good. But do you believe that thing? Or are you just believing God for everybody else? This is the season. This is the time where we stand on Bible, period. Everybody's talking about standing on business and that's cute. But we got to stand on Bible. If this is what God has said and spoken over my life. I come into covenant with it quickly. I'm agreeing with you, God, quickly, quickly, quickly. Hey, Shay, quickly, quickly. No, we're not going to miss it. We're not going to miss it. Not this time. You done fought too much. You done been through too much hell. You done been through too much, too much to be walking around doing this again. Sometimes you got to do it alone, right? This might be one of the seasons the Lord says, you know, you, you got good friends, but I, I, I need you right now. I need you focused because sometimes people can become a distraction. You got to be mindful of distractions. The enemy likes to use people close to you. I always talk about betrayal. Betrayal can never come from a stranger. Betrayal comes from people close to you, people who have access to your heart. A random person don't have access to you. So just be mindful of distractions, mindful of distractions. If you know scrolling, you've been scrolling too much, cut back on that. If you've been scrolling more than reading your word, it's time for you to cut back and get into that word. Because when the enemy comes, how you going, what word are you going to hit him back with? What word? And it's cute to know these little quotes, these little inspirational quotes. But the inspirational quotes don't stop the devil. That don't do nothing for him. The word. The word is what gets him. Resist the enemy and he will flee. Keep shooting that word at him. Keep shooting that word. Keep shooting that word. He'll leave. It's cute. The inspirational quotes is cute. You know, I look at him too. But it's the word of God for me. When you're going through hell, you're going through, you've got to fight. you got to battle well. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. And the word will work if you work it, y'all. The word will work if you work it. I'm going to have to get off here because I know this battery is about to die. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I didn't really intend on coming on live today. That's why I look a mess. But I just feel like we're so close. We're at the door. And we can't miss it. We're at the door. And we can't miss it. If you go to the link in my bio, I have some like free resources you can download. I have one for entrepreneurs and anybody that's believing for a financial breakthrough. Love you, Smiley. You can go to my link in bio and download those. Yeah. You see how you see how that whole ship thing happened today, right? You see that? The um, was in Baltimore. Y'all, we gotta have, we gotta be praying. We gotta be focused because of course the enemy is opposing holy week you too tasha of course of course he doesn't want you to get your breakthrough you'd be like oh i can get alexis i'll just do this and alexis will go back to where she was no not this time not this time not this time all right, y'all, I'm going to try to put this on YouTube. My YouTube is I Need a Word. 
it's the one with the 8,000 followers, I think, because there's a bunch of pages. Or if you go to the link in my bio and click the Instagram, it should show you YouTube as well. It should show you YouTube as well. Oh, yeah, also, make sure you download the I Need a Word app. Download the I Need a Word app. It's in the App Store, the Play Store. Miss Trey, you be on it. It's in the App Store and the Play Store. It's 100% free to the user. I'm working on taking it to the next level. Working it on taking it to the next level. Thank you. I do have a podcast, and I'm about to start doing more episodes. It's called Faith Lifestyle Podcast. Faith Lifestyle Podcast with Quanda Renee. I just did an episode Friday, but I'm going to start doing more. I'm going to start doing more. Thank you for the follows. Is it Tiana? The name of the app is called I Need a Word. I Need a Word. God bless you, Robin. Thank you for joining. Appreciate you. Let's do it, Alexis. Let's go. The Lord will give you a strategy. A lot of things, y'all, it's not on Google. It's in the secret place. That's why it's important that you spend time with God daily, especially if you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're a business owner. Well, everybody should be spending time. But be, you want those ideas. You want those strategies. It's in the secret place. Everything that I've done that has been seen big or major is because I spent time with God in the secret place. I started a podcast 2019 as, as because I saw it in a dream and the Lord gave me a deadline. He told me it, it needed to be out. I think it was April 1st. And the app store, depending on your device. And if you do a login, y'all, don't do the login with the Facebook because I'm about to take that part off of there since um, Facebook doesn't let me... Uh, Meta doesn't really like me. I got to take that off the app. Um, it's only, it's not really lagging. It's, my battery's dying. <laughs> it's time for me to get off. Uh, my battery's dying. Your secret place is the place where you and God meet. The place where you and God meet. We had a challenge some months ago where you pick a place in your house where you and God can meet the same time every day if possible. And you go there, you go there with your Bible, your journal, whatever. And you let the Holy Spirit dictate well, how that time is going to be spent. Sometimes it's reading. Sometimes it's writing. Sometimes it's just listening. Sometimes it's praying. Sometimes it's worship. Every morning, usually my, my, the times that the Lord wakes me up is between like three and five. So every morning looks different, me spending time with the Lord. It does, it's not the same. Every day is different. There's some days I'm just praising there's some days it's praying for hours. There's some days it's just worship. Some days it's a combination. The secret place is the place where you and God meet every day or as much as possible. I would say you should meet with God every day. Um, I got an email. You just talk about anyone? Yeah, just um, admin at ineedaword.org is my um, email. Could somebody put that in the comments for me? Admin at I need a word dot work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Highly blessed. How you pronounce your first name? Is it Sachi? Sache? I don't want to say that wrong. Right. It may it listen, it may not be in your house. It may be in your car. It doesn't look the same every day. It's just showing up. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Thank you. Can you pin that? That's my email. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. A rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The app keeps closing on me. What um, version do you have? The in Play Store or App Store? You might have to delete it and then uh, in, uninstall it again. Because we've done a couple updates. And when you first download it, sometimes it, it helps if you're in good Wi-Fi. The YouTube is I Need a Word. It's the one with 8,000 followers. Or if you click my picture and go to my page and it says Instagram, when you click the Instagram, it'll show you the YouTube as well. The Play Store. Yeah, maybe try uninstalling it, deleting it completely, and then putting back on and see if that works. See if that works. We're getting ready to go through another update too. So it's hard for me because I don't have an Android to explain it. But I would say try that. Hopefully that works. Jesus, I hope that works. You're welcome. Thank you for doing it. You got to just fight the distractions. You got to make a decision. You got to make a decision. Anything that's 
hindering your relationship with God, opposing your relationship with God, you can mark that as the devil. Anything that's hindering your relationship with God, opposing, it could be a boyfriend, it could be whatever. Anything that's stopping you from getting closer to God, that's a sign that the enemy is either using that person, it's a sign. You got to fight them. You have the power to fight. You have the power to fight. You got to say, you know what, God? I need you more than I need all this other stuff. If I don't have you, then what's this life going to be? What's this life going to be? And you just start slow, right? You know, you first get in that relationship. You got to get to know them. You spend time with them, you know. You start out five minutes a day. Then you go to 10 minutes a day. Then 20 minutes a day. Before that, you're hooked. You're like a junkie. I need you, God. I, I, I love sitting with you. Sometimes you got to pray, too, for a praying spirit. Pray, God, for a love to read the word. Because your flesh does not want to read the word. Your flesh does not want to pray. God, give me a praying spirit. I remember when I was going through betrayal and the Lord was telling me to pray for my enemies. And at first I'm like, I'm going to pray all right. So I was doing like, God bless them. God keep them. Little corny little prayers. You know what I mean? And then I saw this man of God on YouTube and he was talking about how the Lord had him on a 21 day prayer, uh, like fast thing. To pray for his enemies and that night the spirit of prayer rose up in me and before i knew it i started praying for that person like their life depended on it right so maybe you got to pray for a praying spirit god give me a hunger and a thirst to want your word to want you let's go miss trey let's go give me a hunger and a fire god to want you the same way we have relationships with friends and other people it takes time to get to know somebody, right? If you ain't never spent time with him before, you know, you, you court him. You get to know him. You got to see him as not this off deity. You got to see him as father. You got to see him as Abba. And a father that protects his own. A father that looks out for his own. A father that wants the best for his children. Not some far off deity or some statue. No, you have the blessing. You have the blessing of the Lord. You got this. Just be intentional. In these last days, we have to be intentional. We have to be intentional. You got to also know your distractions and know your triggers. Right? So if I know hanging out with Smiley, I'm always going to be smoking weed, then I can't be hanging out with Smiley. Sorry, Smiley, to use her as an example. I can't be hanging out with Smiley like that. Right? If I know that hanging out with Extra is going to get me a place where I want to turn up and, you know, then I know I can't hang out with her anymore. Right? So I got to pull away. So sometimes you might can't, you can, you might got to take the long route home. Because if you go, if you drive through the hood and you see Bebe in them, they're going to be like, yo, pull over. And y'all know you're going to be getting it, you know, cracking. No. You got to be intentional. Make the decision for you. How many times do you have to go through this? How many times are you want you're gonna struggle? Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. How many times are you gonna go through this? How many times are you gonna be at this place? You should you know you should have been further along, right? So make a decision today for you. I'm not looking back. That last season is gone. We're getting ready to go into a new month. We have officially entered into a new season. I just gotta walk this thing out. I just gotta walk this thing out. God, I got, I got to see what you have for me in this new season. And sometimes God is like, I want you to give me a yes with no strings attached. Can you give me a yes if there's no blessing on the other side of this? How bad do you want God? Oh, God. Somebody's flagging the live to say this is not appropriate for kids. <laughs> Y'all is something else, bro. Oh my God, I'm gonna go anyway. My battery about to die. <sighs> Only the devil. Only the devil will flag this. All the stuff that they do on this app that's inappropriate. These women with this st hang stuff hanging out. These people arguing back and forth. And you gonna come in here and flag this one. And people are getting a word from the Lord. <sighs> I teach people how to do faceless brands. He is a defeated foe, absolutely. Yeah, some of you go back and look at the promises of God. Go and Google and type in promises of God and you should get a list probably from like Bible study tools. And maybe just read them, limb over them a little bit. 
Some of you go look at the last prophetic word you got. What was the last thing you got? Some of you, you know how you be at events and you get these words or you got a text and you got a word. Go back and rehearse the prophecy. Go remind your spirit that we're, this, we're still on schedule for this. You're still going to get the contract. You're still going to get the deal. You're still going to get whatever. Yeah, but it's somebody that's just doing this just to do it. It's probably somebody who doesn't like me. But whatever. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Speak what I said until you see what I said. Yep. That's just like, and the word became flesh. You work the word until it becomes flesh. Till you see that very thing in your life. You can't let go of it. Just because it doesn't, you do, you work the word one or two times, you don't see nothing. No, you keep going back. You keep going back. God in your word says, your word, which is in Isaiah, says it can never return void. So I'm trusting God that this word will never return void. You said in your word, praying the scriptures, you can never go wrong, y'all. Now, I know it's, we got a to-do list when we go into prayer, but when you give God back his word, the miraculous happens for real, for real. Some of you, you're going to get a miracle this week. You're going to see the hand of God this week for real, for real. And that's not just me saying that. Some of you are literally going to see the hand of God this week. It's Holy Week. Something has to happen this week. Something. There's another scripture that says, give God no rest. Until there's a praise in the earth. Bring that word to God. Day and night. Day and night. That word. The scripture. Until there's a praise in the earth. Until you become the praise. Give God no rest. Until there's a praise in the earth. It's, and, and two. And after this. You get past those adversaries at the door. Some of you. The Lord is going to give you divine rest. You've been fighting for a very long time. You're going to have a season of rest. Where you could just chill and just let God do what he's going to do. Some of you need a vacation. The Lord's going to, may the Lord give you a vacation. I need that for myself. May the Lord give you a vacation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Rest. Just like Jehoshaphat. They got to the place. All they had to do, they didn't even have to fight. They just had to show up. And when they got there, they collected the enemies, turned on each other. Now, all they had to do was collect the spoils. And then it says, God gave them rest. He didn't even have to fight. And God gave them rest after that. But all of these people in the Bible, the success of it is they're asking God for wisdom, for instruction. How shall we do this? God, how shall I do this? How shall I handle this? How should I navigate this? God, This you gave me this business. What should I do? I got it this far, God, but there's some stagnation here, God. What should I be doing? How should I pivot? God, you gave me this career. And now I see like, I don't know, God, what, what are you saying? He gives wisdom to us if we ask. He gives it freely. We just got to ask. Put your pride aside. Stop calling everybody else for wisdom. And ask him, God, what are you saying for me? What should I be doing for the rest of this month? What should I be doing for April? What should I be doing for the next three months? What do you say to me? What are you saying to me? Hey, Aisha. All right, y'all, we're going to have to dip because I think. So thank y'all again. Appreciate y'all. Um, I don't think I'll be live tomorrow. I need to travel tomorrow. But we'll see. Um, maybe Friday. Friday or so. We'll come back on live and see what the Lord is saying. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I'm going to try to put this on YouTube if it downloads. If not, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, so we'll do that. Make sure if you haven't, download the I Need a Word app. Go to my link in bio. You can get the prayer for entrepreneurs. And I think there's a prayer for finances. There's also some other courses and classes and things that I have if you're interested in that. If you're an entrepreneur, wants to get into business, I have a membership for that. Check it out. The link in my bio. All right, y'all. I love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed. Have a great holy week. Remember, continue to fight. Use your spiritual weapons. See you soon.